One of the most interesting new systems in V Rising fundamentally changes the way players engage in combat and build out their character. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're taking a look at Spell Jewels and sharing their awesome impact on the game in the Secrets of Gloomrod update. At this point, I have no doubt you've heard of Spell Jewels. They've been teased by the development team for weeks now, and it's one of the more interesting features coming to the game in the May 2023 update. The Spell Jewels system, when described, can sound a bit convoluted, but in practice, it's a very straightforward system, one that I think deserves to be shown off. Because of the team at Stunlock Studios, we were able to play the Secrets of Gloomrot update early, and as you can see, we have completely embraced spell jewels and even dedicated an entire section of our castle to the craft. There are six spell jewel families in the game, one for each school of magic. Spell jewels at their most basic level are items that can be slotted directly into spells to enhance their properties and sometimes change the nature of the magic. There are three tiers of spell jewels and with each increased tier, the jewel will introduce an additional benefit into the mix. So, for example, a tier 1 jewel will have one bonus, a tier 2 jewel will have two bonuses, and a tier 3 jewel will have three bonuses. As you can see, those bonuses range from your standard passive stat increase to changing the nature of the spell itself, giving it additional interactions. An important nuance of the system is realizing that the developers have actually given players the ability to see how good a jewel really is. By holding the left alt key, you can see the potential stat roll. You can then compare that range to the actual stat of the jewel that you've crafted and see if you've got a god roll or something more middle of the pack. It's nice that the developers give us this flexibility because otherwise we'd never know what's good, what's bad, and where those extremes stop given just how many options there truly are. Jewels are abundant in Veridoran, and as you progress throughout the game, you'll come across many already cut. You can often find these off V-Blood units or in chests with golden chests nearly always containing one. For the early parts of the game, you're at the mercy of RNG, but that actually makes progression a bit more interesting. As you pick up jewels, you get that itch to experiment, and that's something we absolutely encourage you to lean into. In fact, it's something we talk about in one of our new Secrets of Gloomrot videos, where we break down how to avoid some classic V-Rising mistakes and pitfalls. During progression, I suggest you keep an eye out for this resource node here. On the final hit, this rock will produce a number of raw gems, something you'll need later on. Further along in your progression, once you kill Raziel the Shepherd, you'll unlock the jewel crafting table, and this is where things really start to open up. Here you can use raw gems to create targeted jewels that augment the ability of your choosing. You do still have to deal with RNG as you can't choose which bonuses your jewel inherits, but you can now target specific spells, and that's a game changer. By the time you reach the end of your V-Blood progression, I guarantee you'll have more jewels than you know what to do with, and this isn't a bad problem to have. One of the best aspects of jewels is that they're non-destructive. As a player, you can pop into your spellbook and equip any jewel at any time. There's no cost for socketing or unsocketing the jewel, and you don't lose the jewel when you replace it. And in fact, you can actually put old jewels in the chomp chest and get back some valuable raw materials. It's a brilliantly flexible and interconnected system that allows players to further tweak their builds, finding a loadout that works for their particular playstyle. To wrap up this video, I wanted to showcase a few Tier 3 jewels and their impact on the spells they're slotted in. First is Nocturnal Abyss, which enhances the power surge ability in the Chaos School of Magic. As you can see, this jewel provides two passive stat boosts, one that enhances defensive capabilities and one that enhances offensive capabilities, but it's the middle effect that changes up the spell entirely. With this jewel equipped, players can now recast Power Surge, which triggers an explosion, pulling enemies towards the target. Not only is this enhancing the spell, giving it offensive abilities, but it's also providing some valuable utility, allowing for more easily executed AoE attacks. The next gem, Sacrilegious Eye, modifies the Corrupted Skull ability in the Unholy School of Magic. Here, things are a bit different. The first effect provides some additional utility with increased knockback, and the third effect provides a straight-up damage boost. However, it's the second effect that changes the spell entirely. Now, when used, Corrupted Skull also conjures a Bone Spirit which circles the target. Any enemies hit will take some damage, but more importantly, are inflicted with the Unholy debuff, Condemn, which could be a powerful setup in a build focused on unholy damage. Moving over to the Lightning Jewel, let's take a look at Burnt Stone, which modifies Polarity Shift, one of the new spells in the game. 
If you want a deeper dive into the Storm School of Magic, we already have a video up on the channel breaking down each spell, so go check that out. Right out of the gate, Polarity Shift is different. The third effect adds a small snare to each attack, which adds a little bit of utility, but it's the first and second effects that are really interesting. When cast, a Lightning Nova is also cast under the player, adding some direct AoE capabilities, while also applying the Storm debuff static. Additionally, this jewel gives the player the ability to charge up their weapon for a 29% increase in damage by consuming static. This one spell has changed the nature of how the player can engage in combat, and that's only one jewel out of the three a player can equip across their three core abilities. Then we have an Illusion Jewel, Haunted Moonstone, that augments the spell Phantom Aegis significantly. Normally, this spell would simply apply a shield to yourself or an ally that inflicts weaken and grants the Phantasm buff for each enemy hit when it ends. With this jewel, another near god roll, it becomes a support player's dream. The first effect increases the duration by 33%. This is important because the second effect increases movement speed by 14%, aiding with positioning. Finally, and here is the big one, you can now recast Phantom Aegis before it expires to consume the barrier from an allied target and pulls them towards you. This can be life-saving in a boss fight or just getting an enemy out of harm's way that's stunned. Let's look at one final jewel that Livid was rocking during endgame progression, Icy Dusk, which modifies the brand new Ice Block ability in the Frost Tree. We're almost positive this one was a god roll because it ensures you freeze your attackers right as the ability ends or shortly afterwards. Normally, this ability would freeze you or an ally, granting an Icy Shield and healing them for 8% of the max HP. With this jewel, enemies that attack you while Ice Block is active will become chill. When the Ice Block ends, an AoE that inflicts or consumes chill will erupt and freeze the enemies that you are protecting yourself from. Finally, your weapon's next attack will become chilled and deal 39% more damage. This jewel, as well as the others we just talked about, fundamentally changed the nature of spells in the game, and this is just the beginning. So as you can see, jewels are not only an interesting system, they're a game-changing one. And if you're a player that loves to tweak their build, striking the perfect balance of offensive and defensive capabilities, then this system is perfect for you. Again, I want to thank Stunlock Studios for giving myself, Livid, and Schmo preview access to the Gloomrot update. Without them, we wouldn't be able to dive into all of the new things coming with the May update. Of course, there is much more to come as we head into the launch of the Secrets of Gloomrot, so if you're a returning player or new to the world of V-Rising, drop us a like and consider subscribing. I also want to invite you to the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. If you're looking for a place to hang out, party up for V-Rising, talk about great games, and win free prizes, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.